Hi everyone. Um, in these uncertain times uh, where a lot of us are self-isolating and wondering what on earth we're going to do, um, there's a lot of artists that I guess are used to this. Uh, we tend to self-isolate a little bit because you know, we're in our studios and um, just doing what we do as artists. And um, a friend of mine, Martin Aberling, he's a wildlife artist, he had this idea that perhaps uh, some of us could produce a few videos and teach people a little bit about the art that we do um, and maybe some people might get some ideas and um, take up uh, a creative hobby or um, something that takes your mind off the current situation. Certainly is uh, a useful thing to get your mind acting creatively and um, though it certainly helps um, you know, with your mental health and, um, and at the end of the day when when you've uh, come out of this particular period, however long it's going to last, well, maybe we've created some masterpieces, hopefully. So I'm a scratchboard artist. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is run through what scratchboard is and the tools that I use, and then we'll do a bit of a demo. So what is scratchboard? Well, this is an example of a scratchboard. It's, um, it's still in the sleeve, but it's basically a sheet of MDF, so it's a board. Um, it's coated in a very fine porcelain clay, white clay, and then it's covered in black ink. And there's another product called Clayboard, which is basically the clay and the board, uh, no ink, and you add your own ink. So the tools I use, well, the first thing I've got myself set up with um, are two screens. I like two screens because I can have two Im images there or I can have the same image twice with this one zoomed in or vice versa. Um, I have my wine. That's pretty important. And uh, nowadays I have my hand sanitizer just in case I have to go downstairs. I'm actually in self-isolation at the moment um, because I went across uh, into a different state in Australia um, to rescue my son, to bring him back uh, because he'd lost his job. He was a bar, bar staff and um, of course they've all closed down and uh, at least now we can be as a family supporting each other. Um, but it means that uh, he and I are isolating from the rest of our family for 14 days very lucky we've got an upstairs area um, which we can do that in and uh, he's got stuff he can do and I've got stuff I can do which is great. So get that out of the way. Got a toilet roll. Um, that's not actually for uh, normal toilet roll use. That's actually to wipe stuff away um, from my art and uh, keep it clean. Tools. There's all sorts of tools you can use. Um, the first thing I've got, I guess, is an airbrush and some inks and water. And then the things that I use, um, pretty, pretty much anything that can make a scratch. I have uh, tattoo needles here. I have a craft knife, craft blades, very sharp blades. And there's some more here, some more here. I've got a clutch pencil, which I can put tattoo needles in and also fiberglass brushes that's a shaft of um, thousands of fiberglass strands and uh, you just put that in your clutch pencil and you can get a nice soft focus effect on your scratch board um, sandpaper and also steel wool and um, that's pretty much the, the tools I use So one of the techniques I use is I literally just hack away removing uh, the black ink. Black ink is quite hard to get through with the fiberglass brush. Um, so if you take a reasonable amount off, you'll find that subsequent layers, when you spray back diluted ink on there, and it, it's a lot easier to take that next layer off. And bit by bit, as the image improves, it actually gets easier to work. So at the moment I've just been literally hacking away, leaving some texture there just to work with later, but it looks absolutely terrible now. This is 
a lot of artists talk about the ugly stage of their work um, this genuinely is an ugly stage and I'm literally just hacking away of course if I was using a knife uh, rather than this fiberglass brush I'd be being ultra careful I'd be being accurate um, I'd be trying to create depth and contrast and all those things purely and simply by the amount I remove whereas this particular style I'm going to create that by the amount I remove, the amount I add back on, remove, add back on, remove, back, you know, um, ad nauseum, quite a few layers, just literally to, to build that kind of depth and that level of detail that's going to come later. And whilst I'm hacking away, I am generally following the flow of the, of the fur. Um, I'm not following the actual absolute detail at the moment because that'll come later, but, um, Generally, it's the flow. So if the fur is going this way, there may be hairs that zigzag around, but I'll deal with that one later. With a fiberglass brush, these fibers, they flick out and you don't want to go this way and get them in your hand. You can wear gloves. I don't really like wearing gloves, but I always make certain I keep these little fibers that land on the board, keep them in front of your hand because if they get into your skin you can remove them with soap and water um, and just wiping a cloth across them but oh, they can hurt they can fester as well so when you've got a few on there I just blow it off into a bin and you can also use a makeup brush To get rid of the last bits or a very clean bit of toilet paper it's probably worth a few dollars these days Okay, so that's, does that look like a tiger? No, not really. It's really ugly at the moment. Uh, it doesn't worry me one little bit. Um, I always think the magic happens on the third, fourth or fifth layers. It certainly doesn't happen next layer, but at least it starts to improve. Um, with the eyes, I'm actually going to use one of the tattoo needles just to start taking off some of the uh, black ink. Um, but I can stay a bit more accurate compared to using the fiberglass brush so um, obviously I want to be fairly accurate but I'm going to take most of the ink off um, and then add back in take off add back in good thing about the tattoo needles is there's quite a few needles in a row so you cover a lot of distance quite quickly, but you also do it evenly. So I've just gone one way. Now I'm going to go maybe at uh, 45 degrees to that. I'm not worrying about the pupils at the moment. I'll put those back in. Like I say, if I was doing a, um, a scratch board all with a single blade, 
uh, I'd be treating this completely differently and being much more accurate um, and but it's actually a lot slower as well so this is just a, a way I've developed over the years and um, I really enjoy it there see One of the things about the scratch board, well, I think it's art in general, is you need to know your personality. Um, there are people that can spend three, four, five hundred hours on one piece. Um, I'm not one of those people. And if I tried to do that, I'd give up. Uh, it's just the way I am. Um, things have to have to happen a little, little quicker. The last piece I did, which was um, a large orangutan face, uh, quite a statement piece, had, um, I'll show you it. Uh, well, that probably took about 100 hours, and that's, that's maximum for me. Generally, my piece is going to take between 20 and 30, and some of the 5 by 7 inch size pieces, they might only take 6 or 7 hours. And it's just knowing my personality. I know how far I can push it. Um, if I push it too far, it's going to sit in the corner for the for a couple of years and uh, eventually get thrown away.